we're super excited to talk a little bit about how schools are in the process of delivering lab experiences anywhere. And they're doing this through augmented and virtual reality. So what I wanna to do to begin is just take a look at this space. When we talk about augmented and virtual reality, it's something that's being used quite significantly around us. You know, when people are planning to purchase furniture, they're able to use augmented reality applications that allow them to place furniture in the environment before they make a purchase. Or maybe in entertainment, you've seen it on a show like Grey's Anatomy where the doctors are able to project content into a space that's not really there and use that to plan a course of action. Or in the case of Iron Man, where they're able to take content, move it into a space, manipulate different variables and see how that content responds. But did you know that students are actually doing this too? They're doing it in schools every day with topics like anatomy and physiology, with career technical education content, and even in the art, being able to sculpt, paint, and 3D print content. So something that most of us are familiar with um, and have seen, but maybe we haven't thought about those applications for the classroom. I want us to look a little bit at the space and the types of things you may be hearing in your professional literature, at your conferences about different realities. So to do that, we're gonna start by focusing on virtual reality. And when you hear virtual reality, um, you may think a lot of things, but most people think about that head mounted display. It's also referred to as an HMD, but really what it is, is it's those devices you see when you walk into Best Buy or you walk into your cell phone store and it's a tool that you put over your face. You have a device inside of that tool and it allows you to have a completely immersive experience. Once you go into that space, you're either underwater or in the forest or at some historic site and you're exploring that, you're learning more about it. Um, but what you don't have in the HMD is access to your true surroundings. So it is complete immersion, complete isolation from your surroundings. Another type of reality that you hear a lot about, and in most cases, people have experienced it as augmented reality. It's something that's used significantly for entertainment. You've probably heard of Pokemon Go, or you may have used Snapchat. It's the whole idea that when you take your device, hold it in an atmosphere, you're able to take digital content and put it on top of what's really in the environment. So the idea that we're taking reality and we're augmenting it with that digital content to create some type of experience. In the cases I've used and described, it's been more for entertainment and fun, but from an education standpoint, imagine being able to do that same thing with anatomy with trees outside to learn more about what you're seeing through the digital content. And then you have this tool called ZSpace. And that's what we're going to really talk about specifically today. And what ZSpace does, as you'll learn, is it combines elements of virtual reality as well as elements of augmented reality to create an overall learning experience that lends the student the opportunity to learn content in a way that they may not have ever had a chance to learn and explore it before. So let's take a look. Since we've talked about the virtual reality features, the augmented reality features, let's take a look at what it might look like when you merge elements of both virtual and augmented reality. Welcome to the real world of virtual reality on the ZSpace platform. What is ZSpace? It's a tabletop virtual reality that's transforming education today, regardless of whether students are learning at school or remotely. ZSpace functions as your typical Windows PC until you open a ZSpace application, and then the magic really begins. Long story short, ZSpace tracks the user's eyewear and stylus in real time, allowing the user to comfortably reach in, interact, move around, dissect, blow up, or change different variables within the environment.
So now that you've had a chance to see students actually interacting with content in that space, um, let's talk a little bit about the implementation of a tool like this and specifically an implementation as it relates to the way we're delivering instruction today. As you see in the visual here, um, we have two ends to the continuum. One where students are purely learning in a face-to-face -face environment on the left. And then on the right there, we have distance education, students learning remotely. And what we like to do is think about this tool as a tool that can be integrated on either end of the spectrum, but equally important, a tool that can be integrated in between. And as most of you are going really from week to week, not knowing what model of instruction you're going to deliver in, meaning one week you're at school, one week you're teaching remotely, you know, some weeks you have certain numbers of kids on certain days, and so on and so forth. Um, what we've tried to do is work with our users to define what does the implementation and use of an augmented and virtual reality tool look like in all of these spaces. And it really is everything from students being able to be hands-on with the device to teachers being able to present much like you saw in the short video um, where students can visualize have conversation around that content when the teacher's in one location and they're learning in another location. And in some cases where they're having a book, a book bag that consists of a Z space and they're calling it a lab and a backpack where they can send their science labs home, send their career tech ed subject labs home with students for that learning experience. So, Let's look at a little bit at why we do this. And virtual reality is something that's been around for a while. In fact, going all the way to back to 1980, Dr. Jeremy Balenson, a researcher out of Stanford University, who is um, really a leading writer and user of VR to accomplish different types of tasks in both the education setting as well as business and industry, looked at all the research around virtual reality and said, okay, let's look at what it is, how does it work, and really, most importantly, what does it allow us to do? And based on that analysis, defined this acronym DICE. And each letter of DICE represents an affordance of learning in a virtual space. So when, when learning with a tool like ZSpace, what is it that educators are able to do that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do with their students. And that is D, do things that would be too dangerous. I, things that would be impossible. C, do things that would be counterproductive. Or E, do things that would be too expensive. So in the case of an automotive lab, you may not put 30 students on an engine for fear of safety, but you can do it virtually. When you run an experiment, and you want to see the effect of gravity, things that are impossible like changing the planet, doing things that are counterproductive. We wouldn't go to the beach, put jetties in place to see the damage done over time to property and things that would otherwise be too expensive. Being able to provide students with access to cadavers anywhere um, for learning um, would just be cost prohibitive for most schools. But this is something that's been happening for quite some time. In fact, over the last six years, um, in over 2,500 now school districts and with over a million students, we have educators who are um, using ZSpace, augmented and virtual reality as a tool to deliver those learning experiences to their students. And during that six years, we've had a lot of work done to look at what's the advantage, what are the outcomes that are being experienced. And they really center around five core areas. One, that's the um, level to which students are understanding content. Um, and the fact that when they have this opportunity to access the content in a hands-on, open-ended way where they can practice processes, fail, learn from their failure, there's a resulting understanding that's much deeper. The fact that from an engagement and motivation standpoint, 
students get excited about learning when we meet them where they are in terms of what they enjoy doing and how they enjoy engaging. If you think about students and the types of games they play, there's a lot of immersion to those games, ability to change factors and uh, impact outcomes, just as what you saw in the short video um, with doing that in a physics experiment. But those final two that have stars there, um, improving student outcomes and preparing students for the workforce. I know most all education institutions today talk about how do we prepare our students to be more college and career ready. And typically when we talk about that, we tie it to some type of quantifiable outcome that's based on standards. So looking at how do we take um, the standards that are expected to be taught and make them to come to, come to life through the virtual experience. And thereby, when students take those assessments, they demonstrate high levels of learning. Um, in a couple of different studies, the range of improvement is from 14 to 16% when the change in instruction has to do with the integration of augmented and virtual reality. Preparing students for the workforce, a little more about that. Most business and industry today is moving to training programs that train students in virtual reality. Everyone from Arby's and Walmart to Delta to Tesla, um, regardless of the career path in which a student explores, they're going to see that there's an opportunity to practice processes, learn content in a virtual space. Accelerate student learning through engaging instruction with ZSpace. ZSpace allows them to gain a deeper understanding because they can really pick apart all the layers, they can see how different things work, they can manipulate it and really get in there and look at things in a different way. Many students are much more interested, their participation has gone way up and their grades because of that have also gone up because they enjoy using these machines and seeing something in real life. It really prepares the students for their careers and health careers. Our engineering students are getting a lot more experience. It's cutting edge technology. It's giving our students 21st century environments and the experience that they need. It makes you want to learn more <laughs> via the space because it's virtual reality. It's awesome. I have various levels of students in my class. They get a more in-depth understanding of the concept because it's kind of like hands-on and they love the 3D effects. They can pull it out and look at it and turn it around. All of a sudden, the concepts come alive. They're open, they're receptive, they're energetic, they're more engaged. 